Barbara Hershey, Rachel Tocotin, Robert Duvall, Michael Douglas, D.B. Pfeiffer, 1993's Falling Down. We stopped serving breakfast. I know you stopped serving breakfast, Rick. Sheila told me you stopped serving breakfast. Falling Down might be the most important story of one man's descent into villainy that had been done in cinema until the Joker got his own movie. It follows the story of D. Fant, so his license plate, his personalized plate, declares him. A man who has been working for the Department of Defense, who is trapped in a cubicle, trapped in a dead-end job. We, the movie opens, he is trapped in traffic. On the same day that Robert Duvall, the detective, is planning on retiring to go home for good to an over-anxious wife who is always concerned about his safety, reasonably or unreasonably so. We follow the character of defense, Michael Douglas, as he steps out of his car, wanders into traffic, across traffic, and begins to sort of apparently aimlessly weave his way across town. He encounters a variety of adventures. He tries to just sit on a rock in a pu public place, in a park, and is informed by the local street thugs that he is on their turf. He tries to leave with respect that it's their turf, and of course, that's not good enough for them. you got to pay the toll. This results in violence, and he wins. He goes to a fast food restaurant. He tries to order uh, breakfast right at the time that they have started serving lunch. And of course, they don't want to sell him breakfast. This results in a conflict, which he, you know, he ends up drawing a weapon and threatening them and getting the opportunity to order breakfast and then changing his mind and deciding he wants lunch. He pays for lunch. He leaves. Now, these aren't necessarily in chronological order as I'm relaying them. Uh, you know, the, the thugs get their revenge by trying to gun him down in a drive-by. They miss him. They wreck their car. It's how he gets the bag of firearms. He goes to an army surplus store, falls in with a neo-Nazi. There's an ideological moment where you're like, is he leaning this guy's way? And, of course, he does not ultimately lean that guy's way. And what a mess. In the background, Robert Duvall begins to piece together various seemingly relatively minor incidents uh, that have happened that day. Like, well, who, why did he rob the restaurant? Well, he didn't. He paid for his lunch, and then he left, uh, trying to track down the shooting and being able to draw on a map that somebody is wandering through town and participating in these events. Really brilliant detective work, actually. And piecing together who it might be, who's missing, by finding the abandoned car, stuck in traffic, by finding the family, by tracing backwards the narrative of a man at the breaking point who has been spent who has spent his whole life in the cubicle his whole life working away in the department of defense doing this functionary job and having lost his wife lost his child and his marriage breaking up and his mother not understanding him and we get this idea of a man who's in deep psychological problems it really builds up. It takes a while, at least it did me, to figure out exactly what the hell this movie was about. While I was watching it the very first time back in college, it was, what in the world is going on here? And it did not follow anything like the normal path of a normal film. At some point, you realize he's going to do something awful. We begin by seeing this story sort of through his eyes, and we begin with a great deal of empathy about the little, even the little things. Oh, we, we stopped serving breakfast, we're serving lunch now. Um, the little things, oh, get off our rock. And he tries to show them respect and all these things that pile up, and we really enjoy it as much as we know that it wouldn't work in the real world, hopefully. We know that, you know, it, we enjoyed it when he drew the gun at the fast food place and demanded that he be allowed to order lunch. We, we didn't mind it at all after the, the thugs drove him off, that he beat them up, that after they tried to kill him, that he gets the weapons. It sort of escalates like that, and you're like, well, it's, it's just a movie, so I can be more in his ballpark, more in, on his team, and yet 
ultimately it builds up to become clear that he's he's going back to get his family because he intends to do something horrible. We're looking at the process that is leading to something like a double murder or a double murder suicide. It's really not exactly, he himself is not consciously openly aware of it. When, when confronted by Robert Duvall as the detective, he's, I, I don't know what I was going to do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. He has to be told. It really is a brilliant insight into this guy who's broken and he's troubled and he's not gotten the sort of, to, to use the parlance of our times, he's not gotten the help or the support that he needed. He's not in his right mind, but we're literally seeing a crime potentially occur, but we're seeing it through the eyes of the perpetrator, what's leading him up to it, how he himself is in denial. He is a broken and deranged man, not necessarily consciously aware of what he's going to do, but in his mind, he's, he's wandering the earth, trying to set things right in his mind, but it's not working out like it should. It really is an amazing story. And like I said, I would have told you a few years ago that I'd never seen anything like it before or since, and that it is a standout movie for that insight. Although the movie, The Joker, pro possibly the best fame that DC Comics has brought into their cinematic universe ever. I, I was a big fan of the Batman Begins trilogy, not the, the Man of Steel just that didn't work right. And because of that, others didn't work right. And I'll do something else about Justice League another time. They have these great legacy characters, and yet they've always struggled to bring them to the forefront in this in a quality way that really does service to their character and the source material. Joker was an incredible movie and a timely movie. It gave a insight into the things that piled up that have contributed to who and what he is and how he got to be there. And I think that stands out as the only thing I've seen like falling down and the only thing that I would say is as good as falling down or probably better because I like the the comic book genre of movie but falling down was really ahead of its time by all those years and an amazing insight into the troubled mind that ends up becoming a troubled criminal mind and the detective that because he's got the wherewithal to stay on the job one more day to not pack it in early, to not hang out and eat too much cake at his retirement party, but to actually try to unravel the mystery. He's the one that pieces it together and is able to save the day at the end and therefore save, save everyone from the inevitable climax of the collision of this man's troubled mind and mentality, his troubled spirit with the world around him. Anyway, Falling Down, Michael Douglas. Find it, watch it, love it. It's great stuff. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you back here next time. This was actually used. I wonder how many kikes this little can took out.